And I would tell anybody that wants to go into podcasting, don't worry about getting it right. Get started. Because we started roughly eight years ago, and um, we should have started nine years ago. And had I started a year earlier, we would have made the mistakes earlier that everybody makes, and we'd be further ahead. Hello, what's up everybody, Blog Tribe? Pete here from Do You Even Blog. You're about to watch a little conversation I have with the Joe Saul Seahigh from Stacking Benjamins, a veteran podcaster and producer, script showrunner, podcast host, media guru. You're gonna watch me ask him, how can we be more confident as podcasters? Tons of people who are thinking about starting a podcast or just starting or whatever, and they, they find it hard. They don't really know what to do. They find it awkward to first sit on a microphone. They want to know how they can be better podcasters. They get more engaged listeners. They get subscribers that grow instead of just kind of like starting like everybody else and then fizzling out. So you're going to actually walk in mid-conversation because I lost a little bit of footage. And what I'm asking Joe is... What advice would you give to brand new podcasters who they feel pretty confident until they start hitting record and then they're like, blah, 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 blah. So that is where you're picking up in this conversation. What do those podcasters need to know? So Joe, I'm going to ask you to write me a listicle blog post right here on the air. I'm a blogger. I run in listicles. Like that's how I, I see the world. Like it's kind of like the matrix where a lot of Neo sees the world through like <laughs> computer screens and stuff. Yeah. I see the world through listicle blog posts. So that is a horrible hell you live in. I know. It's my terrible. friend. It's terrible. I have to break out of that one day. So write for me, if you will, like it could be two bullet points or five bullet points, some tips for people when I want to start a podcast. I kind of got the tech stuff rolling. I got a mic. I have the equipment. I know where I'm going to host. Like I, I understand getting to Apple Podcasts now. They got some of that stuff figured out. What tips do you have for them for sounding good on the mic, being more comfortable maybe, just trying to think through delivery, how to... Uh, attune their voice? Is it a mentality, uh, a mindset thing? Just give us some general tips on performing well on a microphone. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, and I'll start with the most basic one, which is you're going to mess it up. You're going to hate your voice. It's going to uh, really sound like nails on a chalkboard. And you're not going to be good because it is a 10,000 hours kind of thing. Totally. So realize you're going to make mistakes. And the only way not to is to start talking. Because you will figure out how far away from the mic to be. You'll figure out how to not pop every P and, you know, all the stuff that, I don't know, I feel like some of these articles on, on mic <laughs> stuff are just overblown. I've, I've, you know, you just, you get on the microphone and you, then you evaluate yourself. I think this is the important part is constantly sharpen your saw and think about how can I get better. And the way to do that I think it's two things. It's number one, think in terms of stories. Podcasts are phenomenal story vehicles. And instead of trying to get facts, try to get stories. Because facts are fantastic in your in, in, in listicle world, in yeah, blog world. That's right. In blog world, facts are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Facts suck on a podcast. Our ears, our, our eyes are designed for factual stuff. Our ears are designed for storytelling. Right. So, no, now don't get me wrong. You can still have facts, but if you couch them in a story, tell a very specific story about a time that maybe um, we have a show coming up where uh, we have a lawyer on and she's talking about what to do after the car accident. Uh, and everybody, okay. by the way, learns from their parents or a close friend right. uh, what to do. But nobody ever gets the professional. What should you really do? Right. So she comes on and she's talking about that. Now, th that could be a listicle. Yep. For a podcast, that's horrible. <laughs> so we told very specific stories about, about car accidents mm -hmm. and then, like, where the person messed up. And then we could go through these statistics, you know, uh, five out of uh, seven people don't, you know, don't have the right insurance or whatever it might be. I don't know. I just made that up. Right. But, but, but stats after the story are fantastic. So always think story okay. versus fact. Can I chime in really quick? With sure. Something? I yeah. want to know what you think about this too. I tend to be the person who's super overwhelmed by that word and always has been like, oh, you should tell stories in your marketing and marketing uh, stories. Humans, human brains revolve around stories. I never understood what that meant. Uh, until I'd read like several books because I was just mad. I was like, oh, what does that mean? I don't know what stories mean. I got to figure this out. And one thing that actually really helped me was just thinking about the words examples 
And then sometimes like metaphors. Yeah. I feel like that's less overwhelming to a lot of people, especially in my audience, when they kind of translate into stories. A lot of times if you just tell them like, what's an example of that? They will tell a story yeah. in a lot of cases. Right. No, I think that's great. I also think it, it starts with construction. My construction of the show, Pete, has changed where it used to be I was trying to make a point about a thing, which is what a lot of blog posts do. Mm. Now, I don't really care as much about the point about the thing as I'm looking for stories. Mm. So I start with the storyteller. I want the storyteller to come on. I, so I when, when people pitch us, I, I tell them right in our pitch, I said, tell me a story where I won't know the end. If you pitch me a story where the end is different than I think, and usually the story is going to go like this. And this is borrowed, by the way, directly from a great book called Bird on a Wire, which uh -huh. is how NPR shows make their, make their shows. Really? Yes. Bird on a Wire. Bird on a Wire. Okay. So it's, it's fantastic. And by the way, it's presented like a graphic novel, you know, like cartoons. Okay. It's, it, it's awesome. So oh, this American life and um, it's largely this American life and planet money okay. and how they construct their shows. But, oh, but the story goes like this. It's so-and-so was trying to get X and then Y got in the way. Yeah. So somebody has a goal and you think about that, that's just basic storytelling. Sure. And it's funny being a financial podcaster, I never thought that stories, you know, I didn't really think about that at first. Then I started coming to conferences like this and I went to a couple storytelling sessions and I went, my goodness, money stories are way more fun. Yeah. Money bloggers that tell stories mm -hmm. about their very personal life and what they do, way beat blogs from the financial planner who's telling you exactly how to, you know, what percentages need yeah, to be in your of numbers, asset allocation. Lots of facts, yeah. data, that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so I think construction wise, look for the story first versus look for the fact. That's super interesting. Um, the, 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 the next thing though, that I would say about being good on the mic is be, Put away the pre-done questions <laughs> and just be interested in the conversation. So I like the fact that you're sitting here interviewing me right now without questions. I mean, right. you are, you're just, we're, we're having this discussion. Yeah. And I find that, especially for a new podcaster, those pre-arranged questions are a crutch. Yes. Um, I will tell you this. I have some things I want my interviewee to get to. I have points I want them to get to. So if you've written a book, I know that I want you to talk about the time that you did X that I read in the book. Mm. I know that I also want you to bring up this very important thing that my listeners need to know. So, but I want you to say it, not me. Right. So I may say, so, so I do have those, but those are just lead off topics and then I know for the next five, six, seven minutes, I'm gonna have to be involved in that story and ask good follow-up questions. So how do you specifically organize organize this for your own show? Is this like an index card, like a piece of paper, bullet points? Like you just write down, I don't wanna forget like these three things throughout the interview. I don't wanna miss these three topics. Yeah. That sort of stuff? Bullet points on a Google Doc. Okay. So I'll go through, I'll just go through somebody's book. Uh, I usually read the first three chapters because our interviews are only 15 minutes long. And frankly, I want two things to happen. I want my listener to get a more in-depth dive and not a little smattering of what's the book about. They don't want a sales pitch about the book. Right. They want to get some meat. Mm -hmm. But also, the, the author wants to sell a book. Yep. So if I, if I make our discussion from the beginning of the book both things happen. Yep. If, if, if my, my listener gets what they want and if they like it, they can go buy the rest of the book. Oh, I want to hear more of that. Yes. I want to see more of that. Yes. Okay. But we can also dive deep. But, but anyway, so those, but those questions, I start off just with this, 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 then I look at those and I, and, and this is important and it's really fun. I organize the discussion like a James Bond movie. James Bond movies okay. always start with a car chase. And or some action sequence. Right. So I don't do the thing that I hear on really bad podcasts. You'll notice really good podcasts do it this way. Uh -oh. uh, they don't do it this way. I'm they gotta qualify my own podcast whenever you say this. Well, they don't say they don't say, "Hey, uh, tell me about yourself." Right. right? They start off with, and I'll give you an example of a woman that you and I both know. Her name's Lisa Peterson. Lisa Peterson is a money coach, but she also is about feelings around money. Mm -hmm. I know all that. I could have said, Lisa, tell me a little bit about your practice. Oh, how boring is that radio? Right? <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I don't, my listener doesn't care. 
um, I listen to a ton of podcasts. I'm like, please don't, don't give me the sales pitch. Uh, instead, I started with this. Lisa, back in 1997, I think it was in June, you were sitting in your doctor's office reading a magazine. Tell me what happened. Yeah. And she says, the, I heard the uh, elevator door open behind me. Do you know the story? No, I don't. Oh, I, no. do, do you know Lisa? I do. Yeah. yeah. So I heard the elevator door open behind me. And it just, it just, I could hear the feet and the guy just seemed kind of, it just seemed kind of weird. And I look over and there's a guy and there's nothing different about him. He's wearing, he's wearing like a, like a raincoat, trench coat kind of thing, but he just seems off and I can't figure it out, Mm -hmm. but he's striding very matter of factly toward the door where the doctors and nurses are in the exam rooms. And the woman at the recept, the receptionist lady goes, excuse me, sir, you can't go back there. And without saying a thing, he just turns to her, opens his trench coat, and all everybody saw was guns. Right. She screams, dives behind the desk. People start screaming and running. He opens up the door and goes back. We started the interview there because of the fact that it brings everybody in. Do you want to hear the end yeah. of that story? Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to story, hear the yeah. end of the story. Yeah. Yes. So okay. come and listen to our show. You can hear the end. Of, no, I'm kidding. The, uh, I, I <laughs> you mean, can go buy my book right now. That's right. It's on Amazon. That's right. Joe Saul C. High tells podcast <laughs> guest stories. I tell the first half and then you listen to the show to get the second half. <laughs> no. Um, and I mean, what happened was pretty obvious. He went back there and killed the doctor, killed the nurse, um, took out a couple innocent bystanders, and then uh, committed suicide. But, the, but it made her think differently about life and consequently about money. And it gave us then this very intense conversation that we wouldn't have had had I said, Lisa, tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is so funny, listening to you uh, on all this stuff. The hard part is, and I can like see a bunch of like listeners thinking like, oh, this is like really great info. The problem, is that that involves work, doing research up front. If you're gonna do podcast interviews, or even if you're not doing interviews, just like sit down and talk about a topic, it takes like upfront work, like yeah. research, like planning, and being able to go off of like four bullet points on a Google Doc, it takes a little bit of knowing what's behind those bullet points. So right. you can sit on the mic and actually talk about it and then just glance over at your notes or whatever yes. and get reminded, and then you're back into like the interview or whatever. Yes. No but, but think about what you're putting out to the world. You know, you're putting out this thing that represents you. And mm. I love, I love uh, management experts. I love talking about how processes happen and how things are made. Uh, Tom Peters is a guy who's been around forever. He's a great management guru. Tom Peters says, why, why would anybody come to their job? and go, hey, guess what, I'm gonna suck today. Yeah. Like nobody wants to do that. Right. Everybody wakes up and goes, no, I wanna do be really good at my job. And if you wanna be really good at your job, that's why you do the work. Mm-hmm. You do the work so that I don't do the work for my guest, although I will have guests on our show that go, man, you were prepared. And I tell them back, I'm like, I'm not prepared for you. I'm prepared because I listen to podcasts and you have to make the show that you want to listen to. It's good content. You know, you, you totally. I go on these five mile runs and crap, I do not want to stop and change <laughs> to a different podcast. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it sucks. Yeah. I, want to, I want to be able to stick with it. I like that. Well, Joe, I know you got to go. Uh, you got a focus group on your own I do. show, so you should probably be there. I do. Yeah. Why don't you give us, uh, this might be like totally bad podcast form, but... How always feel bad excluding this. Tell us where we can find you. Tell us where we can get your book uh, that's imaginary. This on is great. Amazon. But for him, always at the end. Okay. Always. Yeah. It's fantastic. Nice job. <laughs> yes. Now Pete's going. Oh, am I doing it right? I know. I'm second like <laughs> guessing myself on the microphone now. Oh, they're like, this is awkward. This is no. Awkward. Uh, you've got a great show. Uh, but, so, uh, Stacky Benjamin show is every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, wherever you find your podcast stuff. We're everywhere. And then our new show, uh, Bobby Rebell and I, Money with Friends, is a show where we take current financial headlines and say, what does that mean to me? Mm. That's every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So Tuesday, Thursday. Well, you're like every day of the week almost. I am so for every day but Sunday. We like take Chick-fil-A. Sunday. Take sun- Sundays off. That's right. That's in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> Stacking Benjamins. Lovely show. Joe, uh, you are a wonder to all the people in, I'd say the podcasting community at this point, but definitely the financial like FinCon community. So kudos to you. Thanks for sitting down with me and being so candid as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Dude, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Hashtag 
Instagram. Hashtag Joe Salsi Guy. You pretend we're talking? Yes, absolutely. Okay, why don't I ask Very you serious. about your favorite type of pizza? And if you don't like pizza, we're not going to be able to take the photo anymore. But... But you know what's funny yeah. is that uh, pizza, very seriously, I never knew Detroit-style pizza was called Detroit-style pizza until I moved away from Detroit. We went to Austin, and somebody's like, 313 Pizza, and that's like the area code in Detroit. I'm like, what the hell? And it says Detroit-style pizza. I'm like, what the hell is Detroit-style pizza? Well, this was just pizza. Yes. And yeah. then they came, and then we had some. We're like, huh. I never knew that was, I just thought that was kind of Shields or Papa Romano's, and I'm like, or Buddies. And I'm like, oh, damn, there's like 10 pizza chains that make it this way.